You know, we got these old cinnamon rolls in here, and we're going to cook them. The mistake that people make when they're cooking these cast iron is we're going to put a bunch of coals under this oven, you know. And you pile a bunch of coals up under an oven, you got enough power there to blast it off to the moon, and you're going to burn something really quick. Like I told you before, we're going to use probably a tall trivet when we cook these cinnamon rolls. And the placement we're going to do with coals is around the outside perimeter, the outside edge, because cast holds heat and spreads it pretty evenly. Uh, go ahead and load the top up. Uh, halfway through this cooking process, we're going to rotate the lid one way, we're going to rotate the oven the other way. That way we're regulating if we've got a hotter spot on one side, we're evening out our heat as we go around. So you always make sure and go around the outside edge, go ahead and load your top up, because if you'll notice, and I've looked for years and years and they never found it, there's not a knob on the Dutch oven that tells you what the temperature is. This is used by many times of repetition and practice, and you'll get to where you can do this. <coughs> and different woods make a different coal. We're blessed to have a lot of mesquite, and I really think it's the hottest wood there is out there. Uh, next would probably be a Bodark to me, or Osage Orange, but it's a really live piece of wood. Burns and uh, snaps and crackles and pops and jumps a lot of places, and we're so many places where it's windy that we don't like to use it. And then next we'd probably go to the oaks, but uh, all wood's going to make a different heat source and how how hot it's going to be. Usually, if you can put your hand that close to it and hold it for five seconds, uh, you're you're under 350 degrees. So I guarantee you this is hot enough. You get a wind blowing 35, 40 miles an hour. Then you create this microwave effect, something that's really going to cause things to cook a whole lot quicker. And you can burn the bottom of something and the top of something with the wind blowing and still be raw in the middle. So we use this old windshield. It'll keep out a lot of that wind that's blowing and really helps. But something you've got to realize too, if you've got more than one oven going around this old windshield, this also is reflecting heat back in here. So really you're creating hotter environment at times. Uh, one other thing, I guess there's two factors that probably figure in to, to cooking in a Dutch oven with, with wood coals, and that is humidity. Uh, you know, humidity chokes a fire, and it suppresses heat. It also affects the way and stuff it not only does the heat, but the way bread rises, just like elevation. You can cook bread at sea level down there, and it'll rise up and be the prettiest thing in the world. You can go to 14,000 foot and cook bread, and it'd be totally different. There's a ratio that you can use by adding baking, soda and baking powder and baking soda to where you can cure all these eels, I guarantee you. So just remember, always go around the outside edge of your Dutch oven with your coals. Go ahead and load the top up. If the wind's blowing, use your windshield. When you begin to take a lid off a Dutch oven, always take it off on the downwind side so you're not blowing coals in there. But most of all, just remember to have a good time.